Welcome to the May 24th worship for Fort Hill United Methodist Church. We're glad you're with us today. And as you are uh, watching, you will f be able to find an order of worship on either the Facebook page, our church website, on the YouTube channel. And we invite you to join with us in worship as we participate uh, through one of those uh, devices today. I want to uh, introduce myself. I'm Mark Brown, the pastor here at Fort Hill. Jacob Dishman is our director of music ministries, and we are very blessed to have Jacob with us uh, as he shares the gift of music. Also today, our, we have John Siegel, who is reading the scripture for today, and we're grateful for John being a part of our worship uh, service this day. It is a glorious day to worship the Lord. I invite us to come together now as we gather in the call to worship you'll find printed. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. The Lord's love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say the Lord's love endures forever. invite you to join now in the affirmation of faith and the response if you don't have access to to the worship bulletin is I believe do you believe in God the creator I believe do you believe in Jesus the redeemer I believe do you believe in the Holy Spirit the sustainer I believe.
with arts restored. He has done great things. We will sing together. We will feast and weep no more. In the dark of night, before the dawn, my soul be not afraid for the promised morning oh how long oh God of Jacob be my strength we will feast in the house of Zion we will sing with our trees toward he has done sing together we will feast and weep no more every vow we've broken and betrayed you are the faithful one and from the garden to the Bind us together, bring shalom. We will feast in the house of Zion. We will sing with our tree stored. He has done great things. We will sing together. We done great things we will say together we will feast and weep no more so um for this week and this past week, we've been doing something called an offering of praise, where we've been taking uh, responses that you all have sent to us for things that you're thankful for, um, or ways that you see God working in your lives. And um, so we got a few more this week that we'd like to um, offer up today. Um, so we have thankful for the bluebirds that nest in the backyard. And thankful for rose bushes that are bountiful this year. God's glory and color. Uh, we have thankful for Elvis Presley gospel music and uh, the church prayer group. Thankful for God's care being shown through so many. And then thankful for our church family at Fort Hill. Amen. The scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of John. And John has just talked in the chapter before this about the way that his whole intention of his ministry is that the people can understand the peace that they can have with God. And then once he's done that, he then goes into prayer, and that's where the 19th chapter begins in John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. 
Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. Now, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world. But they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given to me. I guarded them, and not one of them lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world. But just as I do not belong to the world, I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. May the Lord add his blessing upon the reading of his holy word. Well, Jesus knew the time was drawing near for his disciples to be sent into the world. For a little over three years, they had been following him. But now the time had come for them to lead the way so that others might follow him. The context of Jesus' prayer is called the high priestly prayer. It is a prayer that Jesus offers up for his followers, both his followers who were following him in his earthly ministry and for his followers who would follow him in his resurrected ministry. So Jesus here is praying for his disciples who will be sent into the world, not only his disciples then, but his disciples now, you and I. And the focus of his prayer was on how we might live together as Jesus' followers sent into the world. And his prayer was how we might witness to Jesus, but it was also how we might be witness of Jesus, how we would be the evidence of God's love made real in this world. Here are the two ways that Jesus prayed that we might be the evidence of God's love. One was that we might be evidence through the joy of God's love being made real in our lives. 
John 17, verse 13 reads this way, But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy complete in themselves. Later in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, the second part of verse 1 through verse 2, joy is defined in this way. The joy of Jesus is defined this way. It reads, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. With the joy that was before him endured the cross. The evidence of Christian joy is not defined by the absence of strife. The evidence of Christian joy is defined by faithfulness in the midst of strife. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Christian martyr of the 20th century. He was a German pastor, theologian, teacher, who was part of the resistance movement against Hitler and the Nazis. He was imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp, and on April 8, 1945, the doors to his prison cell swung open as two men came in and ordered him to follow them. They took him along with other prisoners to the outside of the prison camp and they were ordered to undress in the presence of the scaffolds. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in one of the last acts of his life, knelt in prayer before he was hung. One week later, Hitler was dead. As people respond, or thought about Bonhoeffer and the witness of his faith, they recalled these words he wrote about living with faith in the midst of strife. I believe God will give us all the power we need in all the times of distress, but he never gives it in advance, lest we should rely on ourselves and not on him. The evidence of Christian joy is not the absence of strife, it is the evidence of faithfulness lived in the midst of strife. Ronan Tynan was born in 1960 in Dublin, Ireland. In 1980, at the age of 20, he was in an automobile accident, and as a result of the accident, his legs were amputated beneath the knees. It was a challenging time as he dealt with the realities and the strife of what had happened, but he was faithful. He was evidence of God's love. In 1984 and 1988, Ronan represented Ireland in the Summer Paralympics events, winning four golds, two silvers, and one bronze medal. In 1983, he became a physician specializing in orthopedic sports injuries. He was a member of the Irish Tenors and sang at the home of George H. W. Bush on the day of the president's death on November 30th, 2018. In his book, Halfway Home, My Life Till Now, he shares the remarkable story of his life. His accomplishments made all the more amazing when you realize that he was born with a lower limb disability, causing him to spend the first three years of his life in the hospital. 
Well, how did Ronan and Tynan do it? How was he the evidence of the joy that is found not in the absence of strife, but of faithfulness in the midst of strife? He witnesses to how this was possible by crediting his friends, his teachers, his family, and his faith that bore him up and gave him strength to be joyful. Ronan says that the te teasing and narrow-minded com narrow comments of some people got to him at times, but they did not stay with him as he was encouraged by the ways he witnessed God's love even in the midst of distress and strife. Jesus prayed that his joy might be complete in us, the joy of faithfulness, the evidence of his love. Well, this is the message we're sent into the world to share. This is the message we're sent to be. But in addition to the message of joy that Jesus prayed that we would witness to and be evidence of, Jesus also prayed that we, his followers, might be evidence of God's truth in the world. In the 17th chapter of John, verses 17 through 19, the high priestly prayer that Jesus offers for us, Jesus prays these words, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. In the United Methodist Church, sanctify is a word that we use to describe our walk of faith in Jesus Christ. We talk about God's prevenient grace, that love of God that goes before us, God's justifying grace, that love of God that accepts us, and forgives us and lives in relationship with us. And then we talk about God's sanctifying grace, that grace that helps us to grow mature in the faith and the love of Jesus Christ. I like to think of sanctification as the process of living with God's love, helping us to be molded into, into the faith of Jesus Christ. We are called to be a sanctified people as we live in the truth of God's love. As we give evidence of all that God calls us to be through Jesus. Mary Ann Bird tell, wrote about a person who was the evidence of God's love in her life. She tells about this in a short story she wrote called The Whisper Test. And Mary Ann writes these words, I grew up knowing I was different and hated it. I was born with a cleft palate. And when I started school, my classmates made it clear to me how I must look to others. A little girl with a misshapen lip, crooked nose, lopsided teeth, and garbled speech. When schoolmates would ask what happened to your lip, I'd tell them that I'd fallen and cut it on a piece of glass. Somehow it made it more acceptable to have suffered an accident to, than to have been born different. I was convinced that no one outside my family could love me. 
There was, however, a teacher in the second grade that we all adored, Mrs. Leonard, by her name. She was short, round, happy, a sparkling lady. Annually, we would have a hearing test, and I was virtually deaf in one of my ears. But when I had taken the hearing test in past years, I had learned that if I did not press my hands as tightly on my ears as I was instructed to do, I could pass the test. Mrs. Leonard gave the test to everyone in the class, and finally, it was my turn. I knew from past years that as we stood by the door and covered one ear, the teacher sitting at her desk would whisper something and we would repeat it back. Things like, the sky is blue or do you have new shoes? Well, I went to the door and waited there for those words which God must have given and put into her mouth those seven words that changed my life. Mrs. Leonard said in her whisper, I wish you were my little girl. Life defined by joy in the midst of strife. Life defined by the fullness of God's love shaping us in Jesus. This is the life Jesus prayed we would live as we are sent into the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us to join in a time of intercession. Uh, I will offer different prayer time, prayer reflections for us. At the end of each time of reflection, we will pray together, glory to you, O holy Jesus. Let us lift up our hearts in praise and thanksgiving to our Savior and Lord, praying, Glory to you, you O holy, holy Jesus. Jesus. You offered yourself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O holy, holy Jesus. Jesus. You rose again the third day from the dead and had all power given to you, both in heaven and on earth. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O holy, holy Jesus. Jesus. Take full possession of our hearts and make us like you. All kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and long-suffering. Glory, Glory to you, you O holy, holy Jesus. Jesus. Grant your healing presence to all who suffer illness this day, especially those suffering from COVID-19. Watch over those who provide care, give strength to those without hope, food to those who hunger, and fullness of life to all. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Holy, Holy Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So this next hymn, um, you will not find it in your uh, United Methodist hymnal, 
um, but I was searching through another hymnal and found this, and, and the words were too perfect um, with the sermon to, uh, to pass this one up. Um, should be a familiar tune to a lot of you. It's an, it's an older hymn, um, but pay special attention to the words. We thank you for joining us in worship this day. As always, if there are ways that our church or I might be of assistance to you, my cell phone is 804-221-9051. If you have prayer concerns, we have a prayer team that is ready and willing to pray. And uh, you can send those concerns to me at Mark Brown, M-A-R-C Brown, at forthillumc.com. Friends, we are sent into the world in the joy of faithfulness and in the love that perfects us in Christ. May God bless you as you the evidence of that joy and that love this day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, amen. <laughs>